Hey guys, I'm down here in Patagonia, Chile, and today we're talking about three camera movements that you need to be doing for amazing cinematic sequences. Firstly, why are we doing this? We are basically trying to replicate the looks of dollies, sliders, cranes, and other equipment used in movies and films. So let's get right into it. We first want to change our camera settings to 60 frames per second or higher. That will give us the option of slow motion and extra smoothness in our shots. All right, the first camera movement is the pan or follow. So for this shot, you can do handheld if you have good in-body stabilization. You can use a gimbal and you're gonna to wanna to master the ghost walk. Set your focus on the subject, keep your camera steady, and move the camera while keeping the subject in the same spot. The subject is typically moving away from you as you follow them, or across the scene as you're following them sideways. However, this shot doesn't have to be limited to follows or side pans, but you can also follow them in front or even circumnavigate the subject. Okay, here's a tip. For shots that are far away, for example, you wanna have something blurred out in the foreground, the bottom of the frame, so the viewer subconsciously sees the movement that's happening in the shot. So for example, they can be rocks, leaves, branches, anything that will blur out, but not distract the viewer too much from the main subject. Okay, camera movement number two. And this camera movement is the pull focus. So for this shot, we want to use a prime lens or a lens with a low f-stop. So for the shots you're about to see in the video, I'm using a 12 to 35 on a micro four third sensor. I have it zoomed all the way in and f-stop is 2.8. Basically, start with the subject out of focus and pull it into focus. So one thing you should know is that the closer you are to the subject and the more your camera is zoomed in, the shallower the depth of field will appear. So this movement is great for macro shots and highlighting the little details you don't want your viewers to miss. In any normal shot with a wide angle or just a normal lens, the viewer is likely to miss these details unless you get close and highlight them with the pull focus. Examples for usage of this type of shot. It could be for water droplets, snowflakes, sand, leaves, eyes, any sort of details you want the viewer to see. Here is a hot tip for pull focus. To add interest to the shot, roll the camera on a central axis as you pull away from the subject. This roll will add just that bit extra to the shot. All right, the third camera movement is the reveal shot. So this shot initially hides the subject or the view from the viewer and builds excitement and anticipation for what they're about to see. Examples, you could start behind a rock, start behind a bush, start pointing the camera down, and slowly you're going to reveal what you want the viewers to see. So you can also blend two of these shots together, the reveal shot with the pan shot. So as you're panning across, you can block out a scene with a pole or a tree and reveal a following scene by transitioning from that tree. So this is actually called the mask transition and we are going to cover that in a future tutorial, but it is something to remember. All right guys, so that is it for the three camera movements that you need to be doing for cinematic sequences. The first shot is the pan or follow. The second shot is the pull focus and the third shot is the reveal. All right, so if you learned something new today or you enjoyed the video, please give this video a thumbs up. Drop a line down below, let me know what you thought of it or something you want to see in future videos. And finally, consider subscribing if you aren't already. And of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.